Hi, I'm Cody Alexander with MatchQuarters.com. In episode two of Chess Match, we're going to look at the 2019 Super Bowl uh, from the 2018 season. If you guys remember, 2018 saw the LA Rams basically roll through everybody offensively using really uh, pretty much sets like this. Condensed sets, uh, deep back, playing a lot of single, single back zones, wide zone, mid zone, inside zone, really attacking the different uh, aiming points within the defense, and then using these condensed sets to create overlaps and, and layers within the route combinations uh, to really put pressure on, on some defenses. Uh, primarily, the NFL plays a lot of single high, and, and because of that, one way to get kind of these single high teams into trouble is to get into these cluster sets because now you've got soft edges and then these inside guys are kind of tucked in. If you widen them out, you can run up the middle. If you keep them in tight, then you can attack the perimeter. So they try to get everything in there. Well, uh, New England did, did something what looked to be revolutionary, but really if you are kind of been around football uh, your whole life, you kind of understand this is, this is nothing more than a, a 6-1. Uh, and so by do, by doing that, what they ran is a, essentially a, a really an old school four uh, three defense with uh, Chung as kind of this uh, Sam overhang. You've got what I would call a walk technique by the will. He comes in here, and so the the five technique is basically slamming this B shut all, uh, all the time. He's either going to line up in a four eye and just close it uh, again, or he's going to go ahead and work that way, uh, just depending on the formation. Um, and then you have this Mike linebacker that's basically getting everything funneled to him in in kind of a phone booth. Now, what they ended up doing. Uh, in the back end is kind of what we're going to look at for this chess match. Uh, the run fits anyway. They're they're just gapping everything out, and they're basically saying, "Look, you are only going to be able to run uh, in this strong side a gap, but we're going to leverage you to the open side in case you try to attack here, and we can't get that rub." So they're essentially forcing you uh, either in this a gap right here or in this b gap right here. But remember, this is getting closed off. Uh, so if you're going to attack wide zone. You know, what they're trying to figure out is if they're going to, but we're going to go ahead and leverage you so we can get over top of that. So it, it really ended up being a really clever scheme, even though uh, it's very simplistic in nature. Now, what we would get in the back end is really two coverages. You would end up getting some sort of a, a buzz concept or a cover three concept where somebody would drop into the middle, safety would, would drop high, and then you would kind of get, you would kind of get the deep third, deep third. Uh, flat, flat, and then just kind of, he's kind of the low hole, high hole, and then you've got your flat defenders on the edge. The other part of this is that you would get uh, basically just regular cover four. Now, regular cover four against some of these overlapping routes is going to look almost identical to your three buzz concept, but what you're doing is you're just changing the leverage, and he's not going to slam down there at, at, at the beginning of the play. So in this first clip, this is actually the first play of the game, so you get L.A. to come into this reduced set. Now you've got what looks to appear, is, this is basically just a sniffer or a sna a na what's a, called a nasty alignment by the slot. At the snap of the ball, you're going to get zip motion for to the perimeter. The nice thing again, and if you watch chess match number one, is quarters creates these natural uh, edge defenders in these cluster sets, allowing these safeties to stay high and these corners to kind of collect these guys as they come across. So what you're getting is really kind of this uh, this pulling action. You're getting cross action. These guys are going in two different directions. Well, you've got a guy here that can meet him on the other end, and then you got another guy over here that can meet him on the other end. So this is a good example, too, of just how they're basically gapping out this front side. The linebacker has to work across because he's leveraged to the open side. Uh, so he's going to work across face. Now, in this instance, you don't get the DN to cross face. Okay? But he's going, to keep, he's going to slam down that B gap as much as he can. The backer has to work over. Now, this is a great job by this uh, defensive end uh, kind of sticking his leg out there uh, to trip up the running back. Um, but what you see here is... He's got this leverage, so now you've got an, an outside the shoulder, inside the shoulder, and then you have what I would call a cap defender. Uh, even though he gets cut off, this linebacker right here gets cut off, uh, you still are going to be able to have three guys. If you were to get some sort of boot action and a leak out on this end, you have a guy that can leverage that out here uh, with, with these guys kind of coming in, in, in chase support on the, on the quarterback. And so that's essentially what... 
this this kind of this blanket looks like. So if you can see how Gurley, even though he breaks through, had he have not breaking through, uh, you've got essentially outside shoulder, inside shoulder, had he have been able to stay, stay up. And then you've got a wall here and a wall here. Here is your cap defender who could be that that three that that third man there. So this is a good example of this. Here's actually the second play. This is actually going to be the defense is called tilt the front, and then this is actually going to be tilt buzz. So you're going to see a buzz. You can see right here at the snap of the ball, he's going to work into the cross area. He's going to work high. The reason why they do this is because a lot of times you're going to get this kind of an action. Uh, in the in these sets and then somebody's going to either push flat or they're going to layer this thing play action you've got all this stuff going on down here but what they're really trying to do is get it to this guy uh, and see if you cover the alert route and that's a kind of the, the alert route is always the deeper route so you can see here in this buzz concept is that you're going to drop that guy into the middle and look what ends up happening. This is a great example. So it's exactly what I said it was going to be. It's, it's here, and then you're getting this post route. So the moment that he goes inside, this corner can now start climbing to this hash. You already have the safety on top. Now he's going to wall in case this guy decides to break back out. Okay, And so these two right now, he's underneath, he's over top. So you end up having a sandwich here and you end up having uh, what I call cone here. You have an outside, and, and a, a, so you have an outside and an inside, and then if he were to run kind of that uh, post return um, or a post corner, you've got your corner out here on the leverage as well. So it ends up working out really well on these layered routes. Now notice the bottom defenders as we go through, you know, Chung's going to feather out into the flat. Okay, 83, as he was working across, ends up getting destroyed uh, by the outside linebacker. Because he gets destroyed, now that outside linebacker can now, can now attack the guy. But if he were to have escaped, you've got him to clamp down on this, and then now he can clamp down on this, and now you've got two guys that are going for the quarterback. So if you think about it, you basically have, have X'd out these guys. Okay. He can stay high and let the ball bring him down because this is considered a negative route. If you look at the EPA of routes um, underneath the line of scrimmage, uh, it's actually in the, in the, in the red. It's negative. Uh, uh, Stephen Ruiz did a, 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 great, uh, a great article on, on that and how cover one ends up working and then passing routes in the NFL. And that, that was kind of one of the takeaways. And one thing that I tell my kids all the time is hey, we don't want to take negative routes. So if you look at it, you know, here's the line of scrimmage right here. It, you know, anything around where the defense lines up, you know, I would say anything under the 30-yard 30, 30 mark right here would be a negative route. So as he pops out, even if he wasn't, he wasn't going, got blown up, it would be a negative route, and that, that linebacker can play from the top down, let that bring him down. You know, remember, it's surviving downs. This is second down. Uh, and kind of second and long so it's kind of surviving those downs now you've got a third and medium and you can survive that and this ends up being this ends up being a scramble can't go anywhere ends up throwing the ball away so now now we're going to go to another look at a compressed set okay now we, we've got a three by one look so this would be what we would call bunch okay this is going to be tilt four again now, in quarters, again, you've got a trip set over here, but it's a bunch. So what you're not going to get is this. Okay, you're not going to get three verticals. Uh, if you do, this guy or this guy really has to hammer across. He can't just go vertical right now, and then you've got this guy running almost like a wheel route. Well, he can feather out. He's here, and then he just stays on the hash. So it ends up being okay. You end up getting your three on three, and then you get he would have to go there. So even if you got four verticals, running this quarters look over here would be fine. So what you're going to get here again is almost like that box concept. You're going to get you're going to get here quarters quarters. So see how that creates a box for us. Now the nice thing is is this player right here becomes almost like a free player. So he, you, even though you're running quarters, you still get these cover three looks. So we're going to close the middle of the field kind of with this guy right here, depending on what we get. So as we go through, we're going to get play action. 
Okay, play action off of the wide zone, which was a big thing for them. Now, what helps what helps the Patriots is that they leave two guys in to block. So this is essentially a two man route, even though the running back releases out. So what they're doing is just using kind of that slide pro. There's really not a difference from if these two backs were in the backfield uh, and they just kind of walled, they walled out with that, or they ran like 21 personnel and he was a tight end attached and you got, you got two guys and then they're just kind of sliding everything this way off of that wide zone look. And then he just kind of leaks out at the end as kind of that, that last, last resort. So as you see it, we're getting two verticals. And again, we're getting that deep cross look. Okay, that safety on the away from the trips is going to stay kind of in that cross, whereas the safety on top of that is going to bang down on that cross. Now, again, you teach that corner, and he's kind of looking. He's not necessarily looking to the middle of the field. What you would want is kind of almost as he starts rounding that off, he, remember he's got to look for that kind of that what I would call that return route. But the moment that he sees him go and now his motion is going this, his shoulders are now about this angle and his whole momentum is that, then he needs to shoot to the middle of the field. Uh, and so what you're going to end up getting is both corners on the post and both safeties on that cross. Uh, and that's a good example of quarters because that this, the safety and the reason why I call my quarter sky is because it tells those safeties you're in the intermediate. So you're going to get a post here. He's going to be playing from outside, kind of be on top. And then what you would love is for him to end up here with this crossing route. You end him up hammering him home and then he's got the cutoff. With the leak out over here, that's where you kind of get that feather from that and then now everybody's close. So what you end up getting is two on one so as that post works in the middle of the field now you've got two guys as that cross works you've got a cutoff player and then you've got a trail player so you end up getting a sandwich here and then your release guy is right here if one of these guys were to slam release right here you've got the you've got the nickel on top of him and then you've got your flat defender on the other side in the wheel okay here's a good look at the run fit off of this so this is going to be three buzz you can tell it's three buzz because he's going to start working into the he's going to slam into the low hole the the hole right here but this is a good example of what this tilt front looks like so here's the strength here you've got a five technique you've got a heavy three you've got a shade who's going to close here You've got him working through him, and then what you've got is kind of what I call a walk technique by this will. He's out here. So what the, what the mic is really playing is A to A, knowing that a lot of these times, and this is something that's kind of lost on guys. If you're going to single gap fit everything, that's great, but what happens when that gap gets destroyed? So let's say this nose closes this A gap just off of pressure alone. Well, he needs to be able to ball fit off of that. So again, going back, looking at this, we want to make sure we got a five technique, three, Nose is going to slam down on that. He can be heavy through that, or he can sit knowing that this guy can wrap, and then he's reading A to A, depending on what we're going to get with a cap defender right here in three buzz. So with the jet motion right here, and, and really this is, I call this zip motion. So jet would be if it was from the gun. This is zip right here. Chung's got to just hold the edge, right? And then now what you're getting is you're getting this dual action. So you're getting the zip going this way, but then you're getting this guy coming coming across. So you end up getting that dual action, uh, and it ends up being a split zone. Okay, notice how the, the five technique over here is going to try and work into that B gap. So because he's working into the B gap, the linebacker sees departure is this way, so he's going to start working here. As it closes, that's when you're going to see him rock back. Okay, and then he, it, there's nowhere really for that guy, for, for Gurley to go. Because if you look at it, he's got this sealed edge, so that's out of his corner of the eye. He sees that the B gap's closed. Okay, there, he jumps here, he sees him deer, so he ends up coming back. Let's say he would have gone ahead and tried to make this outdoor. Well, you got the fastest player on the field right there being able to come in here. So by capping that guy uh, in buzz and bringing him down into the fit, you actually have, there. there's your extra guy and what I call the cap defender. He's just kind of reading flow, and then he's going to fit off of, fit off of where that goes. So again, he has nowhere to go, so he ends up backing out uh, and ends up being a great play. So here's another look at another run fit. So the same thing, and this is another look that we've seen. You know, they bring 83 into here. They're going to run him across usually. So now we get that play action. 
17 is going to stay in to wall the wheel linebacker. We're getting wide zone, basically what I call split wide zone. Nose does a great job of destroying that guard, which he already has leverage to. So what he's t what he's taught is if that if that guy goes away, I'm going to cut off that gap. What that helps him do is as he's fitting, if he sees that guy close off, this is what we call a belly key. Okay, so he can belly key off of that or keep going because it's it's wide zone. So he can keep going. He's just got it now. He just has to track and keep kind of a look on that nose in front in front of him. So we end up getting wide zone. And the nice thing that I like about this tilt look is that you have an edge defender. You've got a guy in a gap. You've got a guy in the gap. You've got the nose basically out leveraging this guy. This, he can't go anywhere but right where it's going. And so now you have this cap defender. And then with Buzz, as you get that, as you get that safety to come down, now he's kind of your, again, that cap, and he can sink and slide and kind of go wherever. So you can see the safety on top just kind of hanging, hanging, hanging. And the corner, on, uh, the corner over here, because it's quarters, if my guy goes away and then my vertical threat that I'm supposed to choke doesn't go out, well, then now I, can, now I become a, a nice uh, a defender here, defender here, looking for a crossing route. Remember, you've got a, you've got a guy over here uh, ready for the flat. Ends up going nowhere. Okay, here's the last play that we'll look at. So again, we get that bunch set that we saw earlier. We're in what uh, uh, tilt four, uh, and it's tilt four even though the guy's down. Now here's the other thing. Just because a guy starts here doesn't mean he can't pop out. So what you're going to end up seeing is a pop out. They're playing quarters over here. So again, flat, quarter, quarter. There's your box. Remember we talked about box at the beginning of this. And now you've got the guy kind of closing the post, which is kind of nice. Now you're like, how are you closing the post when it's middle of the field open? And this is kind of how you do it. Okay, now this is a good example. We had, saw, we had seen this same play earlier. Okay, and he hangs out on the outside instead of coming back through. Now the, the, the corner doesn't do a great job and kind of fades out. Now... You can, and you've seen where these guys will look like they're going to fade, and then they pop out on the sail. He hammers too high, and then now he's out leverage. So what these corners are really doing is kind of guarding the numbers. okay? And then once they get it, then they got to attack. And this is a difference between uh, levels of football, because this is a fantastic play, probably the play of the game, uh, really demoralizing for those Rams. And so again, you can see how the quarters ends up reacting to it. You have the safety cutting off the cross, kind of keeping an eye on the quarterback. You have him on top. You have the corner here, the corner here. Okay, he's looking at, he's probably playing a little bit of the quarterback's eye, so he stays wide thinking that he can drop out and take this crossing route, but should have held a little bit tighter on this. Corner ends up reading it and ends up making a play. Fantastic play. Uh, one of the plays of the game, for sure, in the Super Bowl. Thank you for joining me today on Episode 2 of the chess match going over New England's concept uh, that they use, the tilt concept that they use with uh, the LA Rams. Remember, this is kind of an old school concept that they were able to br bring back. And I think it's important as football coaches that we always kind of understand these, these older concepts and why they were run and how important they are to the game. Because really, this is something that you can keep in your grab bag. I mean, I, I identified it quickly because all this is is solid over and then they walk the wheel linebacker down. I mean, I've talked to before about a versus 21 personnel of how, you know, if you don't want this guy playing in the bubble, now you just put him on the outside. Now you're running a shade uh, with, the, with the nose because this guy's going to try and crash this B-gap or he can stay outside and do this. So if you're like a 3-4 team and you're using that jack backer to fold inside all the time, you know, you're kind of in, you're kind of in this kind of mold. So understanding how you can modify it and then obviously understanding quarters doesn't have to be built on rails that it, it can have layers to it you know three buzz and their cover four uh, for new england looked a lot a lot of the same uh, and it's kind of how you play it and how you teach it and just is this guy really going to hammer in there or is he going to stay high and play down is kind of that concept so thank you for joining make sure to hit the subscribe button uh, follow for for the most up-to-date clinics also, make sure you visit matchquarters.com. Follow me on Twitter at the underscore coach underscore A. Thank you.